If your blood sugar is high right now, what is the fastest way to bring it down? No matter what type of diabetes you live with, this video will show you how to lower your blood sugars fast. And I'll also show you eight proven strategies on how you can help prevent those highs from happening in the first place. I'm Christelle. I'm not a doctor, but I've been living with type 1 diabetes since 1997. So I've had close to three decades to really test out what works. And no, it's not all about insulin. Some of these strategies work even if you don't take insulin, and a few of them might actually surprise you. And one of the most effective ways of lowering your blood sugars right now is movement. So I'm not going to tell you to go run a marathon. Um, I, no, I wouldn't do that. But light activity can actually be incredibly effective. And okay, I know this sounds like punishment to some people, but two things here. First, it is the most effective way to lower your blood sugars, and it can be fun or at least really productive. When you start moving, you start using your muscles. That will pull glucose out of your bloodstream, no extra insulin needed. So I like the key analogy. So when you eat, food gets converted into glucose that ends up in your bloodstream. Insulin then, which either your body makes or that you have to inject, works as a key. So it opens the door from your bloodstream, allowing the glucose to move into your cells. When you then move, let's say those keys get bigger, allowing more glucose to be moved from the bloodstream and into your cells. So basically, movement equals more glucose leaving your bloodstream, which results in lower blood sugars. Now the big question is, which type of movement will actually work and for how long? The good news is that movement can be completely free and it does not require any expensive equipment. Movement in this context is anything that gets the heart rate up a little bit, and my favorite is walking. But you can also clean the house, shoot some hoops, go to the gym, or dance around the house. It's your pick, so why not choose something that you enjoy, something that you can have fun with, or at least get something checked off your to-do list. Interesting fact here though, if the goal is to lower your blood sugars here and now, you should not choose something like heavy resistance training or interval training. As these type of exercise can improve your blood sugars in the long run, but they can actually increase blood sugars here and now. And once you've picked your type of movement, the next question is, well, how long should you be doing it for? So here's what the science has to say, because for most of us, it's not just start walking, vacuuming, or whatever activity we chose, and then boom, our blood sugars are in range. But as soon as your muscle starts moving, they actually begin to consume glucose. Most people will see blood sugars lowered really quickly, I'm talking within minutes of walking or light aerobic activity. Some studies even detect a drop in the very first minute with certain types of exercise. Walking for just 10 minutes after eating has been shown to drop peak blood sugars by about 15 to 20 milligrams per deciliter. Now remember, we're all different, so how fast and how much movement is going to lower your blood sugars will depend on a lot of different things, including your insulin sensitivity, if you're taking any blood sugar lowering medications and how much of that you have in your body, how much you've eaten, as well as the intensity of your movement. And as mentioned, for movement to work, you do need to have some insulin, so keys, circulating in your body. And if you live with insulin-dependent diabetes, like I do, that means that you might have to inject insulin for movement to work. And injecting insulin is the second way that I want to highlight that can quickly lower blood sugars. It is the only medication I want to talk about in this video. Everything from now on is going to be non-medication ways to quickly lower your blood sugars. But for us who live with insulin-dependent diabetes, it can't be ignored. And the thing is, insulin is what actually lowers blood sugars. So if you have none circulating in your body, you can jump up and down all you want. It's not really going to do anything. I don't think we have to talk a lot about this, but just for safety measures, remember that if you try to exercise without insulin in your system, your blood sugars will likely go up, not down. And you also have to be careful if your blood sugar is too high. And that can quickly put you at risk of DKA, diabetes ketoacidosis, which is a severe medical emergency. So let's not do that, okay? And I would also say insulin is important, but your dose, your injection site, and your timing also plays a big role in how fast your blood sugar is going to come down. But let's move on now, and let's talk about another interesting way that you can use to potentially lower your blood sugars really quickly, and that is cold exposure. Cold exposure is one of those strategies that sounds a little wild, but there's actually some real science behind it. So I'm not talking about freezing yourself here, but there is some science that indicates that when you expose yourself to cold, your cells become more effective at utilizing glucose. When you expose your body to cold, so for example a cold shower or an ice bath, 
that activates your brown fat. That's a special type of fat that burns glucose to create heat, keeping you warm. It's not an instant way to lower blood sugars fast, but studies have shown that repeated cold exposure can make your body better at controlling glucose over time, especially in people with type 2 diabetes. And here's the catch. It's not really a quick fix. And I know that's what I promised you for this video. I see cold exposure as probably more of a long-term strategy to help you potentially balance out your blood sugars in the long run. So I don't think it can hurt. If you enjoy cold showers, go for it. But if you want to lower your blood sugars quickly here and now, movement and insulin are still more effective. Other tips to quickly lower blood sugars I often see mentioned are drinking water, eating fiber, meditating, and other more questionable solutions. But the truth is, this will generally not lower your blood sugars right now. But it can, for a lot of these things, actually help with overall blood sugar management. And it does lean into the question of how do we actually reduce the risk of those high blood sugars happening in the first place? And most preventative strategies are about insulin sensitivity. So we talk about how we optimize your engine, makes it more effective at removing glucose from your bloodstream, thereby keeping your blood sugars lower. So if we stick to the key analogy that we talked about before, it's about sharpening those keys, making sure that they effectively open all the doors so we get the glucose out of the bloodstream and into the cells. So let me give you eight strategies on how to do that and what I've found to be the most effective. And I think I'll do it in a little bit of a rapid fire format. So if you want more details on any of these strategies, leave me a comment down below this video. And while you're at it, why not also like this video and subscribe to the channel. Remember to turn on notifications. That way you'll be informed whenever I post new content you'll never miss a thing. And now, and with the risk of sounding like a broken record, movement, once again, is really effective if you want to manage your blood sugars in the long run and help prevent some of those high blood sugars from happening. So exercise, and especially resistance training, can be really effective in increasing your insulin sensitivity by building muscle mass and activating your muscle fibers. And another way of increasing your insulin sensitivity is weight management if you're carrying around excess body fat. So if you carry around excess body fat, losing just five to 10% of your body weight can significantly improve your insulin sensitivity. And that means around a 10 to 20 pound loss for a 200 pound person. Weight management can be challenging and it can take time, but a combination of calorie restriction and movement can set you on the right path. I find that getting a good understanding of what your diet is, how it's impacting your blood sugars, and what you might want to cut out or add in is best done by tracking everything for one to four weeks. For tracking, I'd write down what you eat, preferably including the carbohydrates as carbs, hits blood sugars the hardest, any meds you might take, as well as your blood sugars. And then you go back through your notes and you identify, well, what did work for you and your blood sugars? And then you cut, you replace, or you reduce any of those things that did not work for you. And while you're at it, you can also consider adding some more fiber to your diet. Fiber is not just good for your digestion overall health. It can also help you balance out your blood sugars. When you eat enough fiber, especially soluble fiber from foods like oats, beans, chia seeds, and vegetables, it slows down how fast your body absorbs carbohydrates, meaning that glucose will enter your bloodstream more gradually. Fiber might not help bring down blood sugars quickly, but it can help prevent them from shooting up in the first place. And then we have another thing that really hits me hard, and that is poor sleep. I think sleep is probably one of the most underrated mechanisms for supporting healthy blood sugars. Even just one night of poor sleep can actually make your body more resistant to insulin and lead to higher fasting blood sugars the next day. When you're sleep deprived, your body can start to release stress hormones such as cortisol, which can help push glucose into the bloodstream. Most adults need at least seven hours of quality sleep to sustain healthy, strong insulin sensitivity. So it might not be what's gonna lower your blood sugars the fastest, but it can help support all the other things that you're doing. Let's dig into that myth that drinking a lot of water will quickly lower your blood sugars because yeah, we really have to debunk that one and talk about why water is actually really beneficial. If your blood sugars are high, you're probably feeling thirsty. And keep in mind that if you're feeling really thirsty, this could be an indicator that your blood sugar is very high and has been for a while. So you definitely want to drink extra fluids to replace the fluids that you lost through urine. And drinking water can help with your hydration, 
and may help glucose clearance, especially if you're already dehydrated. And this is the key here. When it comes to water, we want to work on that every day not to get dehydrated because dehydration can have a negative impact on our blood sugars. So it may not lower our blood sugars quickly right now, but drinking water is more of a preventive measure. Another really powerful preventative thing that you can do is work on your stress levels. Stress didn't just impact your overall body, it directly impacts your blood sugars. When you're stressed, your body can start to release stress hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline, which again can push up blood sugars. You can avoid all stress, but you can manage how your body reacts to it, meaning fewer of those highs that you're trying to bring down later. Breathing exercises, short walks, Stretching or meditation, even just for a few minutes, can help lower cortisol and over time, improve your blood sugar control. We have arrived at the eighth strategy. <laughs> and this is actually one of those strategies that I think most people don't know about, but it's so easy to do, so easy to implement. Because the order you eat your food in actually matters. And if you start your meal with fiber protein rich foods like vegetables or lean protein, and then you eat your carbohydrates last, you can reduce your post-meal blood sugar spike. This is one of the simplest ways to lower blood sugars after meals without changing what you eat or your medication. That is because fiber and protein slows down digestion and also activates gut hormones such as GLP-1s, which optimizes how it handles glucose. So next time you sit down to eat, just think about this sequence. You start with your proteins and your fiber, and then you eat your carbs. It's such a small change, but it's so easy, so simple, right? And those are the fastest way to lower your blood sugars here and now, as well as strategies on how to try and prevent those highs from happening in the first place. What are your strategies? What do you do? Leave me a comment down below this video. You can also check out this video where I show 19 ways of lowering your A1C. And while you're at it, why not subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, that is that little bell, that way you'll be informed whenever I post new content, You'll never miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.